Hey guys, Meredith Baker for On The Map, Off The Radar, and today we have a very timely episode for you. As some of you may know, Ireland is having a same-sex marriage referendum on Friday. If it's passed, Ireland will become the first country to legalize same-sex marriages based on popular vote, although there are already 18 countries that have legalized same-sex marriages so far. And here to tell us more about what's going on in Ireland, we have my friend Gareth McCredden, who is a lecturer in Jesus College and also a gay student living here in England. Um, so thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. And can you explain to us about the referendum, how it was proposed, and a brief history about um, same-sex rights in, um, in Ireland? Yeah. Um, so the Republic of Ireland, so the country that's going to have this referendum, is traditionally quite a conservative country. Um, and, but the road to gay rights has actually been quite a fast one and one that's kind of taken Ireland by surprise almost. So in 1993, we had the decriminalization of gay sex, which was probably the most significant step forward because it was all of a sudden not illegal, or not illegal anymore to be gay. Um, and then in 2010, the Oireachtas, which is the parliament, passed uh, civil partnerships, so that came into law. And then now in 2015, we're going to have a referendum on same-sex marriage. So the reason that this time around we have to have a referendum and the government can't just pass it through is because what we're trying to do is change the constitution. So the Oireachtas, which is the Irish Parliament, is free to make all kinds of laws and change how civil partnerships are defined and who they're open to, but what it can't do is change the wording of the Irish Constitution unless the people um, vote by popular vote and referendum to say that that's what they want to happen. So what's going to happen in this referendum, hopefully, is that the people are going to vote to change the wording of the Constitution on the section on the family to say that any two people can get married without distinction as to their sex. At the minute, it says between one man and one woman. So hopefully, come Saturday, it will be legal in Ireland for people to get married, whether it's one man, one woman, two men, or two women. Um, and by virtue of that, they'll become a constitutional family. Wow, that is a huge deal. Yeah, it's a big deal for us. Um, I'm so excited to yeah. see the results. But can you tell us, is there an opposition group and mm -hmm. who's leading it um, mm -hmm. in the referendum? Yeah. So at the minute, the support for the referendum is quite high. It's at about 75% in some of the polls, kind of in the region of 60 to 75%, which Amazing. bodes very well, but I mean, every vote counts, um, and that could easily change. We saw in the general election last week in the UK that sometimes the polls aren't the most accurate reflection of reality. Um, obviously, one of the major groups who's been opposed to this referendum is the Catholic Church uh, and other religious organisations, but obviously in Ireland, being a Catholic country, they have the biggest voice and the most say. So... Yeah, they've expressed quite a lot of concern about it. There are some more conservative thinkers out there as well who would rather keep and maintain a constitutional definition for traditional marriage as it's been viewed in the past. But generally the support has actually been quite um, broad and, and quite, quite thorough. So we've had a lot of children's organisations, a lot of social groups, um, even some uh, smaller religious groups have actually put their support towards it. And some Catholic priests themselves have come out and gone against the church's teaching and said that they would win a yes in the referendum, which is really cool. That's amazing. Yeah. And um, as an Irish citizen living here in mm -hmm. England, how can you play a role in the referendum? Mm -hmm. So if you're an Irish citizen who um, lives abroad, if you've been abroad for, I can't remember how much it is, but a short period of time relatively, you can register by postal vote and they will have already done that by this stage. But if you're someone like me who's been abroad for years and years, um, you can't vote because you're not resident in the Republic of Ireland. So I think the most useful thing you could do is um, share all kinds of stories, news reports, podcasts, whatever it is on your social media. Make sure that all your friends who do still live in Ireland know that they're aware that they should go out and vote uh, and make a difference on Friday and how important each and every vote is for that referendum. Um, and I think, to be honest, the most successful thing you can do is call your family and call your friends and have a chat with them. Because a lot of people won't vote because they don't realise how important it is. Or they might think that it really affects it's them. It's a huge or, yeah. mon monument for Ireland's yeah. history. Yeah, and people really need to, to get out there, go to the polling stations and vote yes. Because, I mean, we lost, or sorry, we won the divorce referendum in 1995 by 0.6%. Um, so, you know, so it, it was a difference of a few vote thousand counts. votes. So literally every vote will count. So the best thing people can do is call their friends, call their family, share on their Facebook and their Twitter and their Instagram that they've gone to vote. Or so if you're in vote. Ireland, go out and vote. Yes, please, Stop please. watching this video and go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and have there been aspects of the referendum leading mm -hmm. up to it that have been um, overemphasized or obscured in the media's coverage of it? So the media, the national broadcasters have to be um, unbiased. So they don't, they don't have an opinion um, either way. And they, they've been very good, I think, anyway, in terms of, of the debates or of, of advertising the campaigns to give each side equal weight. So when we have a debate, if one speaker has 15 minutes on the yes side, then the speaker on the no side will also have 15 minutes. 
if there are 40 people in the audience who would have voted yes, then there will be 40 people who are going to vote no. And that's fair and just, and it should be like that, because they're a national broadcaster. I think the one problem that we've had in our media is that despite people's best efforts and despite lawyers and experts and, and senators and whoever else explaining time and time again that this referendum has nothing to do with children's rights, um, that the, the concerns for children, adoption, surrogacy, whether or not gay couples will have rights to those things, all that kind of stuff kind of has muddied the waters and it's been used by, by no campaigners to, I think anyway personally, to scare younger people. They're trying to tell them that if you let gay people get married, then they're going to start wander through orphanages and picking up children and saying that they want more and they want surrogacy rights and they want to be able to have assisted donor um, reproduction and all this kind of stuff. That legislation is completely separate from the marriage referendum. Being married does not give you a right to any of those um, uh, facilities. So it doesn't automatically mean you qualify for adoption. It doesn't mean you have a right to surrogacy. Those are things that the Iraq has to debate separately. Um, and whatever the outcomes will be, it'll apply equally to straight people and to gay people. Right, and it shouldn't be... They're nothing to do with each other. Yeah, yeah. mixed with each other. Yeah. Well, this was so informative. Thank you so much. Um, th and also, like, what an important topic and a timely time to cover it. So yeah. thank you. And this has been On the Map, Off the Radar. And like I said before, if you are in Ireland watching this, go out and vote on Friday because this is going to be something to go down yeah. in history. Yeah. Thanks, guys.